Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a joint service of St. Paul's Car Luke and Knott's Bimbrook. We're here at my home. We uh, we did FM Live over at Car Luke this morning at 9.30, and of course, technology was our nemesis, and so it didn't record. So here we are. We are at home. However, anyone wishing to come, Sunday mornings, 9.30, can listen in the parking lot, tuning in to FM 103.3, and we certainly welcome you to do that. A few announcements this morning for St. Paul's. Um, we'd like uh, just an expression of thanks. A note from Kim and Ron. I'd like to thank you for the, our, we would like to give a huge shout out to Charlotte and Marie for the preparation of delicious ham dinner. Ron and myself so enjoyed it. It was so nice to see smiling faces standing at the door with the deliveries. Way to go youth group. Also, thanks to Jake for his part as well and anyone else we may have missed. You are an awesome group of people, Kim and Ron. Also, in Car Luke, our condolences go out to Mark and Bev Baker with the passing of their mom, Violet Baker. A private family interment will take place later, and we certainly uphold you in our prayers and ask for God's comfort and peace to be on you. In Knox, we, um, we have a note of thanks from Leonard Eibel and Karen Cowie and their families after we reached out to them with the loss of their father. They respond, your sincere thoughts and kindnesses are truly appreciated and gratefully acknowledged. Thank you for the basket of fruit and goodies, muffins, and our plants. We also want to remember Leonard and Jesse as Leonard's health has declined rapidly. We pray that as the family gathers with him, they may find strength and God's presence this morning. Well, here we are in a space where we're not able to meet as church again. And uh, let's be encouraged by a song that George Fox wrote uh, much earlier during this pandemic. And I believe it's very fitting and brings hope to us today. Let's listen. Well, the people at this old church once knew have long been gone away from its view. But the days are coming when we won't be alone. Yes, soon our church family is all coming home. Oh! 
until our church family finally comes home. Soon our church family will be all coming home. What an encouragement. Thank you, George. And a reminder that even though we can't worship together, um, we are a church family together and we gain strength, especially as we gather here today. Let's have our call to worship. God of creation who was before there was, we gather to praise your name and to praise you for the revelation of yourself to us. O oh God of light and life, who was before there was, it is through your true light that we are able to see the truth of your saving love. O oh God of silence and sound, who was before there was, we thank you for your eternal word, who speaks to us in our acts of worship. O oh God of time and eternity, who was before there was, come afresh, come anew, come again. Come now, eternal God, three in one. Let's pray. O oh God, the heavens declare your glory. The skies proclaim the work of your hands. And yet, Lord, in the midst of that, we choose to build our own kingdoms, seeking things of wood, of concrete, and of steel that we feel we take more pleasure in than in seeking you. There is no speech or language corner of this earth where your voice is not heard. And yet, Lord, we choose to see others and discriminate against them and to be prejudiced. Lord, your law is perfect. Your statutes are trustworthy. And yet we trust our own rules and our own judgments. Your precepts, Lord, bring joy to our hearts. Your commands are radiant, giving light to our eyes. And yet we choose to harden our hearts and close our eyes, stumbling in darkness. By your standards, Lord, we consider ourselves warned by the grace of the conviction of your Holy Spirit. We understand we have fallen short of all the things that you have called us to do and that we have not done, and all the things that you have asked us not to do that we just continue doing. Father, as we confess these things to you today, our desire is to repent, that is, turn away from these things, that we may be renewed by your grace, forgiven, freed, and clothed in righteousness. We thank you that as we come, you promise us that you will remember our sins no more. We pray now for your Holy Spirit to come on us as we continue our worship, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you at Knox, you will be worshiping with a song by Casting Crowns called Nobody. Some of the words saying, because I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Nobody but Jesus, I'm living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. Here in Carluke, we're going to listen to the quartet, but Jesus is only a prayer away, also a great song of encouragement. Let's listen. Yeah. 
Thank you, Quartet, and uh, just so appreciate that you have taken time to use and share your gifts and talents with us virtually in this way. What a blessing. Our scripture this morning comes from 1 John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from John, uh, from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. John himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. And we hear much of the same words in 1 John 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. Well, welcome to 2022. New beginnings, fresh start even though we've taken quite the step back. It's increasingly clear that we have to rely on Christ, that so much of what is happening in the world today is out of our control. In both our scripture passages this morning, you're, you're hearing these words in the beginning. It's very familiar with Genesis 1 verse 1 that also starts with in the beginning. What the Apostle John is doing is he is announcing that Jesus, the Word made flesh, was at the beginning of creation and is with us now. That Jesus is both fully God and fully human. You see, this is the central belief of Christian faith, by which we reflect on the love, which by which we reflect the love of God and the image of God as we passionately announce it to this broken world. Do you, Christian, believe in that power? To say yes is going to move our Christian faith out of complacency. And some Christians have fallen into that complacency. They buy into cultural doubts that diminish the power of Christ by saying that all belief systems are equal. Faith is something was autonomous with the self. It's about gleaning bits of spirituality that fit what I need. It's certainly not for sharing because it may offend someone or, well, if I seek too much truth, well, then I may have to face some kind of truth and that might demand change. And well, let's face it, many of us are very uncomfortable with change. The result is something that I would say is a bit like soup. You know how you get a can and the directions say, pour this can into a pot and then add a can of water and then heat. Whereas other cans say, take this can, put it in the pot, and heat. No water added. At times, 
Disciples can take perfectly good soup and add just a little too much water. Watering down faith to fit the perceived comfort level, level for yourself or for others, or watering down the power of a triune God or Jesus divinity, watering down Christianity that asserts that all paths equally lead to God. You see, Christianity isn't a smorgasbord, blending in with other soups to be overlooked or picked at, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's not one among the many. It stands above. And I realize that that's an uncomfortable claim. Well, I'm going to make another uncomfortable claim. I believe that Jesus Christ is the third person of the triune God who died, was buried, and resurrected. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No water added. No smorgasbord. You see... Christianity, in its distinctiveness, hinges on the incarnational humanity of Jesus and his divinity. There's no room for patronizing Jesus as a mere great human teacher. Now, this can be difficult for some who have a hard time fitting the logic together that Jesus could be both human and divine, but I wonder why. You see, I, I would claim that I am Dutch and Canadian. And now you might say, well, that's illogical. You, you can't be Dutch and Canadian. But that claim, my claim, is only illogical if being Dutch means that it has to exclude me being a Canadian, which it doesn't. Does Jesus' humanity logically have to exclude his divinity? Well, that Jesus was a real historical person is increasingly undisputed. And so many claim, I love Jesus. I love reading his teachings. I, I follow Jesus, but I don't believe he was divine. But see, if you're following Jesus and you're listening to his teachings, you can't deny what it is that he claimed about himself. I'm going to share with you just four things that Jesus claimed about himself. First, he claimed, I am God. And although Jesus never said those exact words, he did make the claim. In his conversation with a woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, she said to Jesus, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. To which Jesus responds, I who speak to you am he. You see, they're both calling on the promises of the prophets from the Old Testament, one of which is Isaiah 9 verse 6 which talks about the coming of the Messiah and says of the Messiah, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Second, Jesus claimed he had authority to forgive sins. If we go back to the story of King David, when after he killed Uriah so that he could have Uriah's wife, makes a confession in 1 Samuel. His confession says this, I have sinned against the Lord. He doesn't talk about his sin against Bathsheba or Uriah for having killed him, but he recognizes that sin ultimately, all sin, is directed against God. Therefore, it is God alone who can forgive the wrong done to God. Jesus declared many times during his ministry, your sins are forgiven. He claims authority to forgive debts that rightly owed by God. Third, Jesus claimed that I am the resurrection. I don't know if you've noticed in the paper over the last while, there's been a fascination by many people looking into ghosts, psychic phenomena, near-death experiences, UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, they're all the rage right now as people are seeking some kind of spirituality. Book sales for books such as 90 Minutes in Heaven or To Heaven and Back, those kinds of stories have, have sold millions. But have a conversation with someone and say, I believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And all of a sudden they shut down and they look at you like you're nuts. But that is Jesus' claim in his teachings. I have risen and so will you. He promises in John 14 verse 3 that he has prepared a place for us in heaven. 
Well, fourth, Jesus declares, I save you by grace. Many might ask, is Jesus not just one path to God among all other belief systems? Well, it's true. All religions seek to address the fundamental problem of having a right relationship with God. However, Jesus is the only one who does so by grace. All other faiths demand perfected behavior from imperfect people to please a perfect God. The result, often guilt of consistent failure and futile efforts, resulting in hopeless conclusions. Conclusions like, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I'm going to have to pay for this sin for 10,000 years, let alone all the others. I'm doomed to bad karma. I'm going to be reincarnated into a lower life or I just get what I deserve. Jesus says to you, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. I'm going to lift the weight of perfection off of you and the demands of certain behaviors. Instead, I give you the free gift of God. That's eternal life. It's salvation by grace alone. But Jesus, walking among imperfect people, loved all and laid down his life to pay the debt his own demands of perfection required of humanity. He took our penalty and made us righteous before God. He solves the God problem that we could not possibly solve ourselves. The only requirement? Faith in Jesus Christ. Not futile efforts to appease an angry deity or endless seeking nirvana and attempts to end the cycle of reincarnation. People of God take comfort in these four claims of Jesus that he taught. I am divine. I have authority to forgive sins. I have risen and prepare a place for you. I have saved you by grace. You see, for me, that's the better way. And so I stick to my claim. Jesus Christ is the third person of the triune God who died, was buried, and rose again. Well, you might wonder, what does all this matter? Why, why does it matter that Jesus is divine or not? Well, see, I trust that when Jesus said and taught in John 14, verse 8, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And in John 12, verse 44, if you believe in me, you believe in the one who has sent me. You see, Jesus' divinity shined with perfect love as he walked among humanity. He loved the unlovable perfectly. He reached out to the most destitute and brought them back into community. He touched the diseased and he healed them. He laid down his life for those who didn't deserve it. He forgave the ones who betrayed and killed him. No human being, certainly not I, could ever measure up to such perfect love, such incredible grace. You see, Jesus in his divine power is the complete, perfect, divine reflection of God. And if that's not true, I, along with Paul, am to be pitied among all people if my hope in Christ is in vain. I will have been following a madman by listening to his teachings, delusional with the idea that he thought he was God or that he could save the world or worse, I'm following a liar. I've been deceived by his teaching that there is no forgiveness of sins, that there, there is no resurrection, there is no eternal life. There's no hope, even for today. Why follow Jesus at all if all of his teaching is full of lies? That Jesus is fully human connects us with the love and empathy of God. That he is divine delivers us from ourselves in the endless cycle of meaningless spirituality that we can't attain. The divinity brings hope and connection with God. It brings eternal life and it has the power to change the world as that power works through us with divine perfected love. See, without the full humanity and divinity of Jesus, Christianity would have been dwindled down to just a mere legend. 
but it never has. Not like other old faiths of the ancient times. It remains the strongest religion in the world today. Where would we be right now, shattered by this pandemic, without the promises, the power, and the hope of God? But we are more confident than that. We are the Church of Jesus Christ, the triune God by whose power we are forgiven, we are saved, and we will be raised from the dead by grace alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. We praise you, O Lord, that you have revealed yourself to us through the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. We're grateful for all your gifts, God of compassion, and we remember the poor this morning and the afflicted. We look at all those who are working and yet find themselves homeless and living in tents in our city. We remember the sick and the dying as this pandemic wreaks havoc around the world. We remember those whose surgeries and whose tests have been put off because of the overflow of COVID in the hospitals. Jesus, today we want to remember all of those who are serving and working in hospitals, first responders, long-term care homes, and other essential services. Jesus, they are exhausted and they need your touch and they need your encouragement. We pray, Lord, that you would lift off the stress and anxiety. We pray that you would rejuvenate their bodies and their minds. And Father, we thank you for their incredible dedication. Be with them. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those who, um, whose health is declining, for those who have received news that they have a long road ahead of them in terms of their health, for those who are mourning, whether it be from yesterday or more recently, we ask that you would bring comfort and peace, especially to the Ibel family and to the Baker family this morning. God of presence, be with the prisoners and all who are lonely and the victims of war and injustice and inhumanity and all others who suffer, whatever their sufferings may be called. Lord of providence, who holds the destiny of all nations in your hand, we pray for our country, inspire the hearts and minds of our leaders, that they together with our nation, with all nations, may seek your kingdom and righteousness, so that order and liberty and peace and justice may dwell in the land of your people. Grant our leaders wisdom to navigate the falling political systems the crumbling health care and the stress in education. O oh God, our creator, we pray for all nations and people. Take away the mistrust and the lack of understanding that divide us, humanity. Increase in us the recognition that we are all your children. And through Christ, may we love one another as you have taught us to love. O oh, Savior God, look upon your church and its struggle upon this earth. Have mercy on its weaknesses. Bring an end to unhappy divisions and scatter its fears. Look upon the ministry of your church. Increase courage. Strengthen us in faith and inspire us as your witnesses to all people and to the ends of the earth author of grace and God of love, send your Holy Spirit's blessing to your children here present. Keep our hearts and our thoughts in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, let's lift up our hearts as we hear or sing along with the Revelation song.
we have this great assurance that Jesus Christ is, he was, and he will come again. Go now. May God our Father, who by our Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled the world to himself and forgives the sins of all who truly repent, pardon and deliver you from all your sins and grant you grace and power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.